Hello, this is Kate from Daily Tarot Girl. This is your weekly tarot card reading, and I'm using the Elemental Wisdom Tarot for this reading. So I have a couple of things to let you know about. The first thing is I uh, my channel reached 50,000 subscribers. So woohoo! <laughs> and I'm celebrating by doing a... Uh, I'm going to go live on my channel on... Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific time, and I'm going to be doing one card readings. I'm going to be answering any questions you might have about tarot. So come hang out with me on Sunday, and I might draw a card for you. You can chat with me, ask me anything, and uh, yeah, it should be really fun. The other thing I want to let you know about is um, my four week tarot course, Reading Tarot for Others, starts next week on Wednesday. And I'm going to close down registration on Tuesday. So if you're interested in that course, please sign up. I hope you can join me. I'm going to put the link below if you want to learn more. And I'm particularly excited about this course. This, this actually might be the last time I run it. And so I'm going to really splash out. I'm going to be doing um, weekly live Q&As. There's going to be two live tarot practice parties. Uh, there's so much fun stuff happening. I'm so excited about that course. So I hope you can join me and uh, let's dive into the reading. So we have the Knight of Cups. Let's zoom in a little bit here. We have the Knight of Cups for the beginning of the week. So Monday and Tuesday-ish. And as always, I set the intention for these cards to just kind of give us an overview of the week ahead and the various opportunities that might present themselves. So the Knight of Cups is a court card, and the Knights are all about forward movement. They're about like moving forward, they're about taking action, and there's a lot of energy and enthusiasm with the Knights. Now this particular Knight is really, really interesting to me because he's a little bit different from the other Knights. The other Knights are a bit more driven, and more action-oriented and adventurous, whereas this knight is really good at following his heart and paying attention to, um, I was going to say like what lights him up, but that's not it. It's like paying attention to where he is called, like what is calling his heart, you know, where, where does he find himself drawn? So that's how he navigates what direction to take and how to move forward and what actions to take. It's like what actions, you know, fill his cup. <laughs> he's, he's holding this cup out. He has this empty cup that he's holding out and he is searching for fulfillment, but the expression on his face and the expression on this dolphin's face seems to be one of relaxation and contentment. So it feels like he's moving forward and he's He's really listening to his heart and paying attention to where he feels called to go, but he's doing it in this kind of relaxed way. He's not like driven. He's not searching from a place of lack. Uh, he's searching almost from a place of more curiosity, I think. And so the advice I feel that this card has for us at the beginning of the week is as we move into this week, as we move forward, as we do whatever it is that we do this week, whether you're setting goals, whether you're taking action or making plans or whatever it is that you're doing. The Knight of Cups says, you know, really be in your heart as you move forward. Be in your heart, pay attention to your emotions and your feelings, and just notice what fills you up. You know, what fills your cup? What uh, what is satisfying to you on an emotional level? What is it that um, makes your heart sing? And paying attention to those things as you make plans and move forward and put your energy and, and uh, time into things, just keeping those things in mind because that is going to be an important part of moving through this week. Let's look at 
the card for the middle of the week, so Wednesday, Thursday-ish. So here we have another Cups card, the Ten of Cups. And the Ten of Cups is what I call uh, a card of dreams coming true. This is a very happy card. Um, I also feel like when I look at this card, I get this sense of contentment. Again, the Knight of Cups had that same kind of feel to me. There's a feeling of contentment with the Ten of Cups and a sense of belonging, feeling like you're in the right place at the right time, like you finally kind of tie all the loose ends together and you feel like you've found this place of belonging. That's what I feel when I look at this card. Why it's appearing to us in this reading, I think, is encouraging us to ask ourselves, are we here yet? Are we in this place where we feel very comfortable and content? Or do we feel like we're a long way off from that? How close do you feel to reaching that place of contentment? And what does this look like for you? And again, I like how this card is kind of connected to the, the Knight of Cups, because when I was talking about the Knight of Cups, I said, you know, it's just going to be so important to um, pay attention to what makes your heart sing. You know, what is satisfying to you on that emotional level? Um, you know, being in your heart, like as you move forward and make decisions. And I feel like the Ten of Cups really echoes that that sentiment. And with the Ten of Cups, um, it's asking you like, what, uh, what is, what does it mean to feel contented? What does it mean to feel a sense of belonging? Like, what does that feel like for you? What does that look like for you? And I often will say this when the Ten of Cups comes up. I feel like this card is encouraging you to dream and to really let your imagination go wild and don't be afraid to have dreams, even if they're kind of unrealistic, because even if they're unrealistic, you will get an idea of what's important to you, what direction you're wanting to go in. So Ten of Cups is saying, don't be afraid to dream. And whether you want to dream big or dream small, it doesn't really matter as long as you allow yourself that freedom to, to dream. Okay, let's look at the last card. This is for the end of the week. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we have the Ten of Swords, which is like the opposite of the Ten of Cups. So this is so fascinating. Um, so the Ten of Cups is kind of this feeling of having everything that you need, feeling totally fulfilled and at peace and feeling like you've really, you know, your dreams have come true, you've accomplished something great. Um, this feeling of connection and belonging. So it's a really beautiful card. And with the Ten of Swords, it's like the opposite. Feeling just defeated, feeling like nothing works out, feeling trapped, feeling stuck, feeling maybe a sense of betrayal, like you got the short end of the stick here. And so the Ten of Swords is, fa it's fascinating that this card has come up right after the Ten of Cups. And what this tells me, because these two cards are so different, it doesn't, what I'm not, I'm not seeing that like, oh, the week's going to be fantastic and then it's going to suddenly go to shit. Although that might happen. <laughs> that could happen, I suppose. Um, but I, what I sense from these cards is there might be some uh, ups and downs this week. So the ups might be really high and the downs might be really low. So this sort of like up and down and just kind of being aware of that and and planning for that, that there may be some ups and downs here. So the Ten of Swords, when it comes up in a reading, it can indicate a need for healing, for taking care of yourself. And actually what I'm getting as I look at these, as, the, as I look at the Ten of Swords with the Ten of Cups, the message I'm getting is don't be too hard on yourself. Don't beat yourself up if you haven't achieved all your dreams yet. Because I think when we give ourselves permission to just dream and dream big, sometimes at first it feels really good. And then we're like, oh, but I'm nowhere near that. Or that's going to be impossible. Or I'll never reach that. I'll never have that thing that I'm yearning for. And then we start to feel really defeated and kind of stuck. And... Uh, yeah, so what, I, what I'm getting there is 
be aware of that. <laughs> so we want to be able to give ourselves full, full reign to dream and fantasize and imagine and, and uh, all of that. But try to be gentle with yourself as you as you do that. And don't try not to feel too defeated if you're still a long way off from realizing your, you know, your ideal future or your ideal present. So let's focus now more on the the Ten of Swords. So the Ten of Swords can symbolize being stuck, but what I like about this version of the Ten of Swords is none of the swords are actually stabbing her. Um, so other versions of this card will have someone lying face down with ten swords in their back. Um, but with this ten of swords, this is a much more uh, gentle, <laughs> gentle version because none of these cards are actually going through her. They're just around her. They're keeping her kind of trapped and kind of from moving freely. But she's not actually stuck if you look closely at this card. And so what I, what I get from that is that where you think you're stuck, be willing to question that because you may not be as stuck as you first think that you are. Um, you might just be a little bit limited and that's different. That's not the same thing as being stuck. And the other thing I get with the Ten of Swords is this need for rest. She looks like she is sleeping or resting. She looks like she might be having kind of a fitful sleep. But what I really get from this is that if you're feeling defeated or you're feeling stuck in any way at the this week or at the end towards the end of the week, you might benefit from giving yourself a little extra rest if you can, if if that's available to you. Um, taking a bit of a longer break, you know, giving yourself an extra hour's sleep if that's, you know, possible to do. Um, yeah, that's what I'm getting from the Ten of Swords is you might need a little extra rest on the weekend. Okay, let's look at all three of these cards and I invite you to have a look at these cards yourself and just notice if you're drawn to a particular card Notice if there's a particular character or symbol that stands out to you. The symbol or the character that stands out to me the most is this dolphin. This dolphin is really looming large. Um, and then I see the rainbow and then the red dress. So those are the three symbols for me. And this is an interesting exercise to do when you're doing a reading is pick one symbol on each card that stands out to you. So I've got dolphin, rainbow, red dress. <laughs> the dolphin is so friendly and encouraging. And he seems to be saying, even if this week has challenges, even if you feel low energy or defeated, and I kind of feel like this Ten of Swords to me just makes me think of feeling zapped of energy, feeling like really lethargic and kind of listless. And this dolphin is like the opposite of that. And he's like, even if you feel tired this weekend, or even if you, you know, there's challenges, etc., cetera, um, stay in your heart, stay, stay, um, Positive is not the word I'm looking for. Uh, enthusiastic isn't the word I'm looking for. I'm not sure what the word is, but it's like he wants you to stay like curious and and keep your sense of humor. I feel like dolphins have a sense of humor. <laughs> I don't know if they do or not, but I feel like they probably do. And then the rainbow in the Ten of Cups to me is about sort of everything sort of coming together and dreams coming true and sort of daring to dream, like allowing yourself to to dream. And then the red dress in the Ten of Swords is interesting. I don't know what it represents. Um, I feel like it represents like almost a desire to like stand out from the crowd and a desire to get attention. And I feel like that desire and following that desire will actually lead to feeling exhausted this week. So just kind of uh, being aware of that as we move through the week. Okay, so um, let me know in the comment section if there is a certain aspect to this reading that really resonated for you. 
Um, I'd love to, I'd love to hear it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that this reading was helpful to you and I hope I see you on my live stream on uh, Sunday at 11 a.m. Maybe I can to draw a card for you. Uh, so thanks so much for watching and uh, I hope you have a wonderful week.